The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. For anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it, to hear what you hear but do not hear it, Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Of all the parables that Jesus tells in the four Gospels, and there are lots of parables, this is the only one you can kind of figure out what it means without having to have an explanation of it by Jesus, and it's the only one that he explains. You want to kind of say, well, what's that all about, Jesus? And there are so many other parables, the parable of the unjust judge and the widow, the parable of the wheat and the weeds, the publican and the Pharisee, the fig tree, the good Samaritan. Some of these do not make sense to us and they leave us scratching our heads wondering what's the point of the parable and these Jesus does not explain. 
So in today's parable, the sower lavishly throws seed everywhere, not seeming to care at all where the seeds fall. Now, as a farmer, he totally knew the ground. So you would think that he wouldn't throw seed where he knew it wouldn't take root, on the path where the birds came and ate it up, on rocky ground where there was little soil, and so it withered for lack of roots, among thorns, which then grew up and choked it. And that he was not a city boy, so you would have thought that he only would have thrown seed where he knew it would have produced a rich harvest. What might be a deeper meaning yet of this parable? Well, the sower throws the seed, hoping that somehow, some way, somewhere, it will take root. And even if it takes root and dies, it has taken some root, and then it might take root again, and then again and again. Similarly, God is lavish, abundant, generous, even careless. So when God works in our lives, he plants his seed in our lives, even where it might not take great root, but it will take some root, and then maybe a deeper root another time, and then another time, yet a deeper root, and then another time, even more fertile soil in our lives. If it dies again, God will keep throwing seeds in our lives. That is to say, God will keep working in our lives because what we know of God for sure is that he will never, ever give up on us. So one message to us listeners is stop trying to figure out what kind of soil you are. As if it matters, because it doesn't. Are we praising God with the kind of soil that we are? Maybe we're just praising ourselves. We need to stop taking the temperature of our souls. And if we stop taking the temperature of our souls, then we stop taking the temperature of other people's souls as well. What we need is to stop taking our temperature and to get to work. The work of being receptive to God's seed and the work of planting it as well. Of course, you and I, we all want to be fertile and rich soil. And one day we will be. But in the meantime, we're a mixture of soils. Rather than figure out what kind of soil you what kind of soil you are, listen closely to the words of the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. So comforting. In other words, that means that God will eventually have his way with us. Since God is eternally faithful, we should let him go about the business of shaping and forming our souls. God knows what he's doing. God is creative. Do you possibly think that you can get in the way of God ultimately accomplishing his will in you? Really? You might thwart the plan for a while, but God is so creative. God will find another door, another window, another route to work into our lives. Last month, I was making my annual retreat at Santa Rita Abbey in Sonoita, Arizona, a Trappistine Abbey of nuns, a place I love very much. And I was talking with one of the nuns there about a very important decision I had to make. And I said, Rita, my heart is just not in what I have been asked to do. And she said, well, just pray. And if God moves your heart to that, then there's your answer. And if God doesn't move your heart, then there's your answer. And I said, well, Rita, I understand that, but how do I know if I'm blocking how God wants to move in my life? And she said, 
Joe. God is so creative, he'll get in it some which way. Your little foibles will not thwart the work of God in your life. And so like any good parent, and God is the best of parents, God will find any possible way to make us say yes, to incentivize us. Now, good parents know that what works for Austin might not work for Angela. And what works for Angela might not work for Jim. And what works for Jim might not work for Carolyn. So the good parent finds ways of getting every child to be successful, like a good teacher. A teacher has to find ways of making every student respond to incentivize every student to want to learn. Now, God is better than any parent and any, and any teacher. So God keeps at it until each one of us says yes. Because as scripture says, it is his desire that not even one of these little ones should be lost. Not even one. Why else would the shepherd abandon 99 and go in search of the one? I read a great little reflection the other day on this parable of the lost sheep, and it simply said this, God doesn't understand metrics. God is a very poor mathematician. He can only count to one and you're the one. Isn't that a great thought? You're always the one. So, you know, maybe the way we become fertile soil, which we all want to be, is to stop, stop figuring out where we're at and get to work. Just throw seed. Reach out. Do what we can do. And stop trying to figure out if it's worth it over here or not worth it, or if what my time is a good investment over there or not over there. I, I'm not talking about being silly, but I'm talking about not having to know what the outcomes are going to be before we start. I always say that, you know, <laughs> we were founded in France, and if things worked then as they work now, we'd still be in France trying to figure out if there's enough time or personnel or money to get us across the ocean. No, just, just reach out, just do, just be apostolic, just serve, just do it. That's in the end how we, how we become fertile soil. In the meantime, God is a master at working with mixed motives, or shall I say mixed soil. God wants us so much, he'll take whatever soil we give to him. So, it doesn't matter about Caius, what kind of soil you think you are. Stop trying to figure it out. It doesn't matter. And if you want to become more, more fertile, it's very easy. Just get to work. Just reach out. Spread the good news. Plant seeds. Do what you can do. Help where you can help. Serve where you can help. And in doing that, God will make us more, more and more fertile.